Hey, what's up everybody? Guys, my name is Miles with Boyer. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, today uh, we're doing something a little different. I know often I talk about gear, um, a lot of mindset coaching, stuff like that over in our community and uh, in, in our small group coaching uh, programs and, and classes. But today on the YouTube channel, we're talking through the most boring and also the most important thing we could possibly chat about. We're talking today about wedding workflow. You guys, wedding photographers and even portrait photographers, if you don't have a like beautifully detailed uh, workflow, I'm gonna challenge you guys right now that you are just sitting on a time bomb. So I know everybody will always say like, what happens if something goes wrong? Most of us are kind of like uh, perpetual optimists and just saying like, that would never happen to me. You guys, not only is it going to happen to you, it's gonna happen to you soon. You're gonna have a, car a card fail, a hard drive fail. There is something that is gonna go wrong and today we're gonna fix it. So here's where we're starting. If you guys know me at all, you know there's like zero fluff. I'm not gonna build this channel up or this page up or even this video up with a bunch of crap that I don't believe in because there's nobody, nobody has time for that, okay? So here's where we're starting today. Uh, we're sitting at my desk in my office, uh, working photographer's office, y'all. This is not a like clean YouTube studio. This is not a place where only an influencer or like content creator works. I shoot at least 30 weddings a year all over the world. Uh, we do uh, round numbers, probably close to 500,000 total images in volume per year in my company, which means I have to have an incredible backup system as well as a great workflow so that I can find a single image on the drop of a dime and here's how we do it. First things first, let's uh, let's back out just a little bit and talk to you a little bit about the gear that I'm using. I know everybody is always curious about that stuff and so I'm gonna get into it very quickly uh, and then we will we'll dive deeper as we go, okay? Uh, hey, workhorse camera for me still uh, is the GFX 100S. Um, full disclosure here, y'all, I say this in every video. I am a Fujifilm endorsed photographer. That being said, this video has nothing to do with Fujifilm directly. They don't even know I'm making it and they're certainly not paying me for it. Um, but this camera and the big brother, the Fujifilm GFX 100, in my opinion, the most powerful uh, medium format digital cameras ever created. Uh, and absolutely the the mastermind behind how I get that cool vibey cinematic color in my work. Um, if you're even interested in that, maybe hit me in the DM uh, over on Instagram at Miles with Boyer and I'll get you more information on it. But for now, let's just suffice it to say the GFX line from Fujifilm is what does the vast majority of my work. Uh, they are by far the cameras that get the most uh, that get the most love run through them. Uh, second to that is the uh, new Fujifilm X-H2. Now I have the X-H2S as well as the X-H2. Uh, depending on what we're doing and what we're shooting it for, um, I may reach for one or the other, but I'll tell you this, in my camera bag all the time is this X-H2. It pairs beautifully with my favorite X camera ever, which is the X-T4. Um, the files just feel really vibey and, uh, and kind of online, on par with it but this X-H2 has lightning fast autofocus, allows me as a wedding photographer to, uh, to never really miss anything as well as um, the track focusing options are just really, really cool. That's it. We're not gonna dig, dig any deeper into camera stuff today, except for, uh, let me pop this memory card out because we're gonna use it, uh, us going then into what happens next. All right, so you get home from a shoot and you're exhausted and you're fried, and every part of you wants to just say, I'm gonna set my camera bag down, I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'm gonna tell you right now, that is where the errors start. So you need to ha ha hammer down your workflow while it's still fresh on your mind. So here's the way we do everything. Everything comes down to shooting initially two cards. All right, so these are the actual cards that I use. Uh, they are both, uh, for, for our SD cards, they are both from ProMaster. I love the Velocity, the Cine card, as well as the Rugged card. You guys, I've used so many memory cards in the course of my career, and, uh, and I've had a handful of them fail. The thing that I love about ProMaster is that ProMaster and Delkin are, uh, are made by the same company, uh, but ProMaster has a lifetime warranty. And, uh, and so, though I buy all of my memory cards uh, from Bedford Camera, because they're a ProMaster deal, dealer and they're right down the road and I just love to support local. Um, Y'all, anywhere you can pick up a ProMaster card, uh, I would go for that just because when something breaks or when something goes wrong on it, 
Um, the data is on you. Uh, hopefully you've got a good work up workflow, but man, I break these things all the time and I run back down to Bedford's with the broken card and they just swap it out for me. So lifetime warranty on these things. Um, again, these are the 128 gig uh, velocity and rugged card from uh, ProMaster. I always shoot dual cards and here's the reason why. Full disclosure, my very favorite camera, very favorite camera is the Fujifilm X100V. I shoot almost everything that is for like my family and just personal love work, all that type of stuff with the X100V. In fact, actually that camera right there is the X100V and I love it. I love the way it feels. I love the way that it shoots, but it only has one card slot, which means when I'm on the clock, it's not gonna cut it. So dual card slots all the time. You'll be surprised how often these things will fail. And, uh, and when that happens, there's really no coming back from it. I know there are some softwares out there, even some companies that like specialize in pulling um, you know, corrupt files off of a card. I've never seen it done super successfully. So uh, at least not with you know 100%. There's always gonna be failures in there. Shoot dual cards, okay? Uh, in my X-H2, they use these new, uh, what, what's this called? The CF Express cards, um, just because the things are mammoth. This is a 325 gig Delkin CF Express card. The thing is huge and a little bit overpowered if I'm honest. But the thing I do love about this thing, I get home and I plug this into this and plug this into the computer and in like minutes, and I'm not kidding when I say that, literally minutes, three, four, five minutes, an entire 320 gig card uh, could be dumped. I never shoot that much, but I guess I could. Uh, and so that's kind of cool. All right, so shoot the dual cards. Uh, the next step, obviously, is the dump, all right? So I love this six card reader. It's, uh, it's something that um, some friends of ours uh, recommended to me as a part of their workflow system. Uh, Ryan and Heidi, uh, we're just super rad to send over the way that they do a workflow. But this six SD card reader was on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link and I'll post it in the show notes to this thing. It was pretty cheap and it is lightning fast. So I plug in as many as I can get in there, six of these things, as well as if I have a CF Express card, bam, all of that stuff goes directly into one of these. All right, so here's where the passion starts to show up. I know this is boring. I'm trying to make it exciting, trying to make it interesting. It's not interesting. This is workflow. If you're hanging out in here, that means that you're trying to invest in the longevity of your business. If you've already exited it out, God help you when something goes wrong. This, these SSD drives are the secret. This is the key, all right? So if you've never paid attention before, uh, you should read the back sometimes on, on, the, on a thumb drive. Did you know that thumb drive memory is only rated for like a handful of months? And that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but the reality is thumb drive memory was created to transport data from A to B, not to hold data. A lot of different uh, kinds of memory actually work in that same so sort of way. Meaning if you're trying to hold on to something for a while, you need to find a, a kind of memory that you can really rely on. SSD memory is that. And fortunately, the cost of SSD memory has come down a lot. So here's how this works. I shoot a wedding, I put it on two cards. I take one of those cards and I pop it into my SD card reader via this guy and I back it up onto its own SSD drive. This is the cool thing, all right? I have a ton of these guys, a lot of them. Now, again, I realize a lot of you guys are gonna be like, that is an incredible amount of money. Y'all, each one of these is like $150. If it takes me $150 to back up a full wedding and actually have a peace of mind that it's done well, well worth it, all right? So each wedding gets its own, uh, gets its own SSD drive. That allows me to do a handful of things that we'll talk about as we move forward. All right, so now I have it on this SSD drive and the next step is taking it directly into Narrative Select. Y'all sidebar here, if you're just logging into this uh, soon after I post this video on YouTube, then you have the opportunity this next week on my podcast to actually hear the, S, uh, the CEO and founder of Narrative, James, uh, as, as well as my buddy Kyle, who works for Narrative, jump in and talk with me a little bit about the power of using an AI-based culling software to help you get through your photos rapidly. If you want more information on that, click over to the link right here uh, to the Photographic Collective podcast. All right, let's keep going. So we've got everything on this SSD drive 
and now we've got it loaded in to Narrative Select. And the thing that we're doing in Narrative Select is not culling immediately. I know a lot of photographers that do that. Y'all, I don't have that kind of time. So what I do is I load everything into Narrative Select simply so that I can confirm that all of the files are there. It'll allow me to go through by camera by camera and make sure that everything looks as though I'm not missing anything. And then what I do right off the bat is I go ahead and create a Lightroom catalog. I just ship a, a Lightroom catalog with everything without any uh, selections or culling done of any kind. I just create the catalog under the name and it's all stored on this hard drive. And then this is where the magic really starts. So this hard drive will eventually go to our editor who will help me with all of that process. I'll talk about that in a second. But first, I actually then clone that file from this hard drive onto a big four terabyte Seagate hard drive. Uh, I've got a stack of these things at this point. And, uh, and they, they serve as sort of the workhorse uh, in the office. Now, I don't need the speed. All I need is reliability and that I can plug this thing in and just let it chill. So if you can see in my office right now from camera, camera two, you can see that I work on a huge monitor. Uh, I actually do picture in picture on this monitor a lot. The reason being is because I'm a little bit extra and I actually have two MacBook Pros plug into this. One MacBook Pro is running all of my office type stuff. Uh, as well as a, a full-time system backup. It is just perpetually backing up every file. The other one is handling all of my editing and processing and stuff like that. That's way extra. You probably don't need that. I probably don't need that too. But what you can tell is that I have these hard drives, these large uh, uh, like Seagate four terabyte or sometimes even like an eight terabyte hard drive plugged in. And that guy, once it takes forever to back up a wedding from this to that, is then connected to the secret weapon. Y'all, did you guys know that Backblaze is like dirt cheap? I, I remember years ago hearing, I think it was a John Branch video, who's, shout out to John, a super cool guy and a good buddy. But I think it was John Branch, it may have been Reggie, that told me that Backblaze is like the only way to back up your photos. At the time, we were doing everything manually, keeping hard drives even in uh, safety deposit boxes at the bank, trying to keep things as safe as we possibly could. And then I realized something really stupid. If one of those hard drives fails, it doesn't matter how safe it is in that safe at the bank, I still don't have that data. So what I realized is I need to get stuff on a server system that I can rely on. Backblaze is a like monthly or annual charge for uh, unlimited space. And when I say unlimited, y'all, I have over a million files on my Backblaze account and they've never called to gripe at me yet. So. Those big hard drives then sync directly to Backblaze. And sometimes it might even take, even with fast internet, it may take like, uh, I don't know, seven to 10 days to get a full wedding onto Backblaze. But here's the cool thing. That whole time, we're gonna count it out together, okay? That whole time, I have one, two, three, and the big hard drive, four copies of those photos. You tracking with me? Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So by the time they hit the server, I can confirm it. Now I'm down to just three copies, right? I've got, well, I guess I've got three copies on hard drives. Track with me, I'm ADD here. Uh, and now I can actually format my cards, all right? So now I've got the workflow that is built around this thing already having the catalog. The catalog is already backed up on the big hard drive. It's already backed up onto the server. Now, every time I update that Lightroom catalog, it will go all the way to the server, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And now we get to work. That's all been the backup process thus far. I hope you're hanging with me. This is a lot to take in. The reason we do it this way, though, is because if I have five copies, by the time I start editing, I can, I can uh, format those cards and not panic. The truth of the matter is probably I've got a wedding again next weekend, and then next weekend, and then next weekend with engagement sessions and bridal sessions and families and all the stuff in the middle, I need those memory cards and I need to be able to use them. So now this guy goes through the initial call. I call down everything initially to, uh, using a lot of the AI based assistance that Narrative Select uh, helps me with. Y'all, I'm not a big fan of AI when it does my job for me. 
And we could get on that soapbox if you want to, but I will tell you this, I am a huge believer in utilizing AI as an assistance for my job, which is being the artist. So I go through and I use Narrative Select to help me see what photos have closed eyes or are blurry, or you know maybe if there's a whole set of them, it helps me select which one may be the best in that set. And I star and flag separately. So everything that is gonna go to the editor gets flagged, Everything that's starred gets edited by me first. The editing process takes as little time as possible, but I have to do it right. I ship that into Lightroom. We apply color correction that is sort of unique, although somewhat standardized across all the files, and tweak down everything that is starred so that the editor can see in the flagged photos how I want that wedding to look. You tracking? And then this thing goes to the editor. Now I can get back to work on all of the other ones that I've got to shoot and work with, right? And while this thing is going through the editing process, I have peace of mind knowing I have multiple backups all over the place, including the cloud, should something go wrong. Now I get this thing back about a week later from, from uh, our editor, and it is time to load it into Lightroom, check over the files. It's about a 90-10 workflow in my experience, meaning I still usually have to go back in, recall, kind of adjust some horizons, maybe tweak highlights, stuff like that. And I export all of the files for upload to our PicTime account and sync the catalogs from this to the big hard drive to the server. Once the JPEGs are exported, now I can upload high-res JPEGs into PicTime. PicTime is the way that we work with all of our gallery services to make sure that our clients have an amazing experience as well as a reliable access to their photos over a long, long period of time. So when we switch over to PicTime, I now have how many copies? Are you tracking? I feel like I should put a pop quiz in here, okay? So I've got one, I've got the big hard drive, I've got the server, and then I go to PicTime. You remember, I only want three copies. So what can I do now? Well, once I confirm that the client has those files, I can format the SSD drive. And it's time to start the whole process all over again. Hey, y'all, I know that this is a different kind of uh, a video for me, and I know that we just processed a ton of information in a very short period of time. So here's what I'm gonna tell you guys. If you had a hard time tracking with any of that, that's okay. It's all right. Over at the Photographic Collective, I am doing free and cheap training for photographers all the time. Whether you wanna join one of our small groups, jump in with a three-month mentorship with me and Jared in our triad training, or you just wanna be a part of a positive community filled with image makers and videographers and creatives who are doing nothing but supporting each other and raising the overall level of our industry, join us over there. There's a link right here for you to do that. Hey, last thing. I want you guys to get more and more and more out of this channel every time I produce a video. I only do this for y'all. And so if there is something specific that you would love for me to cover, I need to hear it from you. Drop in the comments below, not so that you can smash my face and follow and all of the tacky stuff that you hear YouTube creators say, simply so that I can create content that applies directly to you and I will see you soon.